<laughs> but I will say since high school. Yeah, it's been a long, it's been a long time, and it's really been a pleasure watching your development as an artist over the years. Where are we right now? Thank you. We're at Angel Skate Art Center, and so we're in San Pedro, you know, by the Korean Bell, and just a few blocks away from Point Furman. Okay, and this is your art studio where all the magic happens? Yes, this is the art studio. Yes, yes. All right, so can you kind of show us around and describe what this layout is? Yeah, you know, so right in front of us is, is where I mix the paint. Do you create uh, your own colors? I, no, you know, I use different, well, I do mix paint, you know, uh, but I am used diff a couple different brands of paint. I have my Nova color. I've got, you know, my sort of better acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. And I have all these plates over here that I mix color on, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty particular about the kind of color I'm making. So, you know, I've got tons and tons and tons of that. And so, yeah, so this is, this is all the art, you know, some of it's in progress, some of it is done, you know, these over here are pretty much done. These are in progress. This is done, but I'm going to do some more to it, you know. Okay, we'll it, talk about that in a moment. So okay. Tell us how you found out that you had an artistic gift. How old were you and what happened? Well, you know, it's... It's hard to say, you know, when you're sort of looking back at yourself being a kid, because you're just living in the moment all the time. But I could look back at myself and say, ooh, that's a clue, that's a clue, and that's a clue. Like, we were talking about paint by numbers, and we all know how frustrating paint by numbers could be, but sort of being the kid that wants to tackle this paint by number, I think that's a clue. And then I remember being in the first grade and, and painting a picture. I just have this memory of painting this picture in the first grade and, and not being finished in its recess and everybody's out playing, but I want to finish my painting. You know, so I think that's a clue. So, so just different things. I mean, even in high school, you know, uh, we both went to the same high school, Palisades, and, and I just remember the kinds of things I was painting in class, you know, and I'm like, you know, I remember uh, copying a Picasso, you okay. know, and, and, you know, made my brother, like, say, what is this? You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You know, so just like clues like that. <laughs> but you per continued to pursue it in college, is that right? I did, you know. Um, uh, now, I, in the black family, a lot of the time your parents aren't encouraging you to go into art. Um, you know, that, that was my experience. And so when I went into art, you know, I, I think I verbalized to my mother I wanted to be an art major, and then she told me what my choices were. <laughs> <laughs> and art was She clarified for us. <laughs> She's like, sociology, you know, <laughs> a, education, you know, but, you know, so I went in as a sociology major because that was one of my choices. <laughs> But I was I was taking art classes anyway, and 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 I, I lost my mom as you know, you know, and and I didn't really tell my dad that I was an art major. Maybe like <laughs> how crazy! I didn't tell him. Maybe it's just like maybe I should tell him since graduation is next <laughs> month. <laughs> and the sociology section, look at the program. Like, he took, you know, he he didn't tell, like he wasn't supposed to. But um, but I, I took classes early on and and made really important relationships with my art teachers and and had support, you know, by them in college. So at that point, had you decided you were going to pursue it as a profession? At that point, I you know when you graduated they, with a degree in art, right? So they were the role models, okay. right? So I was like, okay, you know, they're doing okay, you know, they're teaching in college, so I'll 
I'll teach in college. I, I thought that that was a possibility at that time. And, and so that was sort of the plan. You know, I, I knew that if you got, you know, a graduate degree, an MFA, that that would make that possible. So um, I think it would have been a few years earlier, but you know, by the time I got my master's degree, you know, the, the field was flooded mm -hmm. and it was very hard to get a job. They weren't hiring a whole lot of black folks back then either. So, th so that was a thing, you know, when you looked at the faculty of who was teaching in these colleges, you know, the percentage was super, super low. So after, after graduating, you know, you know, it was sort of a crisis and I had to figure out, you know, what to do. You had several fellowships and residencies. Tell us about that yeah, in yeah. your progression and trajectory of your career. Okay, yeah, so right after uh, undergrad, I got a residency at a place called Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture. And where is that located? That's in Maine, okay. you know, it's in Skowhegan, Maine. But it's highly reputable, you know, where we know how Bill Cosby contributed so much to the black art field. And he, after, after me, but he gave uh, scholarships to that program. It was a very sought after program. And, uh, but I got a scholarship with my school. I told you that it was a very supportive experience there. So I got a full scholarship there. It's for six weeks, seven weeks. It was amazing. You know, some of the highest regarded uh, uh, artists in the country were there, you know, as visiting artists or residents, resident artists. So, you know, these guys that I'm about to name, they're all in the museums, all the museums, like Frank Stella, Louise Nevelson, uh, uh, David Hockney, you know, were, uh, Vito Acacci, they were all like these visiting artists. So it, it was just, Super, super amazing. So are they giving lectures or you're watching them or you're painting too? What's the environment That's, like that? Right, you know, so we had studios there. And so every week we would have critiques, you know, in this one big room called the barn. And so whoever was the visiting artist would, you know, sort of be the guest and, and help with the critique or run the critique. And so, um, Oh, on that weekly basis. So there, there were 60 of us and there'd be 60 paintings. And, oh, and so we got feedback from, from these artists. It was amazing. And then you had one in Kentucky. You I know? did, you know, so, so um, I had that one that was, you know, between undergrad and grad. And then in 1997, before the Kentucky one, I got two residencies. So that was like, you know, quite a bit of time later, you know, um, but in 97, I went to a residency that's in California at um, uh, Temecula, California. It's called Dorlin. And this place was so rustic, Patty. I mean, so rustic, there was no heat. And I, I know, I don't even know. Cause you see, I'm old and no electricity. And, I, and oh, but people talked about this place being so great and, and it really was. So they had these gas stoves or these uh, stoves, wood burning stoves. And I used up all the wood. <laughs> I was burning that stove all night. And, and so you're painting by day and I had this great, great studio. You know, so, you know, these residencies, they're gifts of time and space. That's exactly what they are. You know, later that year, I went to Helene Wurlitzer of the Wurlitzer Piano mm -hmm. fame. Uh, that was in Taos, New Mexico. Really, really beautiful. Uh, and then uh, four years ago, I did go to Kentucky. So uh, Paducah, Kentucky. And it's, it's called, you know, art, art, in residence, uh, Paducah. And who owns that space is an artist by the name of 
of uh, Alonzo Davis. And Alonzo Davis is, uh, was a very prominent artist here in LA and ran a gallery called Brotman Gallery in Lamert in the late 60s and 70s. And, you know, all the great artists of LA, uh, black artists of LA showed at his space. So John Otterbridge, Noah Purifoy, Mark Greenfield, he was the baby, you know, back then. Uh, uh, Betty Saar, Suze, uh, Suzanne Jackson, you know, so, you know, all of them, you know, were there. So it was sort of an honor to sort of be in that space, even though it wasn't in LA. <laughs> so did, is that where your flag series, the seeds of that was born? Totally, and I would say it just like that. The seeds were born there. And, you so, know. so after, can you kind of take us through the trajectory of your painting style and how would you describe it? Okay. Because the, the art from the t-shirt is markedly different from your kind of the mosaic that you did for the that you the grant you won for the Metro right with your mosaic but the mosaics are kind of that's what leading toward say. leading toward this but then you went into the spherical shape and then you started doing that and then now we're at the flag so right. can you take us through that trajectory yeah you know everything's super gradual yeah. you know uh at Dorland was you know that was uh, in 97, so however long ago that was. Um, <clears throat> more than 20 years ago, geez. But um, that's when I first did abstraction. You know, it's just charcoal. And, you know, I was saying earlier, it's like you're doing these residencies there for a month, what are you gonna do? You know, so so I was, I was drawing. And it was abstraction, it's something I've always Low. I wouldn't say always, but I, I gradually became interested in abstraction uh, as I began to mature as an artist, as I began to be exposed to more uh, by, and also by African American women, you know, like, like uh, Mary Lovelace McGee, you know, I saw her work for the first time. I was like, a sister did this, <laughs> you know, and, you know, I saw that at Cam and 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 then sort of having these experiences with abstract art which i think are magical that can't be recreated in any other uh <coughs> style of, of art making so i became more and more interested in it and it sort of started there and then from there, I was sort of going back and forth between abstraction and figurative. I started doing sort of those watercolor mm. pieces, you know, the one I did with your dad. Yeah. And um, and and so uh, it just sort of the circles just sort of grew out of sort of memories of thing. You know, a lot of abstraction sort of comes from many different sources, landscape, memory, you know, just ideas as this is, is more conceptual. Being from California, and the irony is, is that, that, um, that being born in California at the time we were born and being born in the South at that same time were two different experiences. And I had no awareness of that until my adulthood. Mm -hmm. You know, so so I had this dream, I'm back, you know, it's six months, you know, four months later and I have this dream. And it's of these four black sort of draping flags, like the installation at Luis de Jesus that you saw. And, um, and I'm like, how do I know these are flags? I know they're flags. Why is there four of them? You know? And so I would have sort of discussions with friends, like, why do you think there were four? And we had all these theories. But my hope was, I hope this means that so-and-so is in office for four years. I'm not gonna <laughs> tell anybody because I don't want to jinx this. You know? So, um, so that's how it started, but it was like, 
I've never done Drake before. You know, that's what Sam, you know, Sam uh, Gilliam does. I don't do that, you know? And, and so I said, well, what do you do? How can you turn this into something? You know, baby steps. You know, I'm talking to myself, baby steps. And so that's how I came up with this, is because I was already sort of doing this kind of paid uh, application, you know, and it could be interesting if I, to me, if I did it like this. So I had the underpainting in here for a long time, so uncomfortable with it. You know, because it was so different. And what's the underpainting? It's like that, you know. So I told you that I, that when I go back into this painting, you know, I'm gonna going to like like the underpainting is just a row that's this big. That's maybe just one color, okay. you know. And then you paint on top, and you just do more stuff to it, you know, just add more color, subtleties, changes to it, you know, so I had that underpainting up, there was an open studio, I was like, do I take it down, I'm too afraid, you know, this is too different, people are going to be like, and, and these over here are underpaintings as well, so my underpaintings look like that of the flags, so... But it is the real painting that same size, or you? It's you, this big. Okay, so you know? then you translate so just, it to a bigger. Yeah, yeah. But I'm doing, I'm figuring out the paint like uh -huh. on the flag. Okay. You know, so, um, <clears throat> so I left it up for this open studio, and people just like gravitated to it, and they were like. Because it it's shocking. It's shocking what's because this? you don't expect it, but you look at it. That looks like flag. It's a flag. And then you're like, the colors, the, the everything. I mean, awesome. Yeah. So after that, it gave me the confidence to just go on and finish it. And it, I felt, you know, since I was using these browns, like, you know, the browns are inspired by skin tones. They're uh, browns from yellow, browns from red, and sort of these dull blues. And, you know, when we were kids, we would refer to our skin tones with primary colors. <laughs> now, now look how that works. Life started in Africa. Uh -huh. The primary colors, you know, so, <laughs> right? You know, so, so um, that made, you know, conceptual sense to me. So at the same time, were you kind of thinking of this being a social commentary on, on top of the, the art that you were, were doing? Absolutely. So I, that was the other part is that, that was the other part and that's what was, you know, in retrospect, so great about it is that, is that you know you're seen in a certain way. You know, you know, okay, June makes these. June's the one that makes circles. June's the one that makes bright colors. You know, when I was making t-shirts, June's the one that makes t-shirts. You know, so, I mean, we all, we all have that, right? We all have that. And so when it comes to, uh, when it came to that idea, that the idea was so kind of threatening because it was, I am redefining myself yeah, you now. you took a risk. And you're you taking a risk. Was, but it was a calculated risk, even though you didn't think it was a calculated risk. But, Not at all. But hasn't this basically shifted the echelon that you're operating in now? By it taking does. That, that risk, that's when at the show at Barnsdale, you had won that grant from Los Angeles County. It was, you were one of 12 or one of 10? I don't remember, okay. so I'll just say 12. Yeah, one of 12 mm -hmm. artists that won this grant to work on art for a year and then have a joint show at Barnesdale Park. And I remember as a child taking an art class at Barnesdale Park. My mom had us take classes at museums, at the park and stuff. June, your, your work was clearly, <laughs> and I'm, 
Yeah, you're my friend. I'm buying. <laughs> I have other friends that are artists. I don't buy their work. I spend money with people. <laughs> Did your your work was clear and far away the best in that show, and that's where Luis Jesus bought your, one of your your flags and then signed you up. Right, right off the wall, he came. He was there at the show before I was, and I come in and uh, Isabel Luderot is like June. Luis de Jesus is here. And I just couldn't talk, you know? So I was like, you better not talk, you know, because you're going to be tripping over your words. So, Because how important, can you describe to us um, for an artist to get representation by a gallery, what that means? It's, and what it's, it's meant to your career since that it's, time? It's huge. It's just a huge blessing. and. And most of us want that. You know, there's some that don't, that do very well independently. But what it means, you know, he's taken me, my art, all around the country. You know, he's exposed it to people that I have no access to. Yeah, and he, he got you in this Armory show in New York, right? in the Armory and show. And you won the first place award at that show. Right. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened you know, without their I mean, I, I just laugh because she was like, oh, you know, I'm in the finals. I'm like, they did make their decision, but they have to pretend like they went through a process <laughs> so that they could, you know, say they can see. But when your stuff's in the show, it is just arresting. It's arresting because yes, no one has ever done this. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate it so much. I do think you're biased <laughs> because we're friends, yeah. but I, I receive true? it and, and I appreciate it so much. It's the truth. Thank so. you. Yeah. And you had also mentioned, just going briefly back to Paducah, that was the first time you really had an opportunity to create the large art that was in you, but you need to have a space where you can work on large Absolutely. art. Absolutely. And so that kind of freed you to the next level to actually able to now see what you had conceptualized, you know, in all of its Absolutely. You know, glory and size that you want to yeah. produce it. Yeah, I remember calling my girlfriend Kim, you know, and told her, I said, Kim, I want to bring this wall back. I, I need a wall like this. So she's, she's like, June, you'll get your wall. You'll get your wall. And then when I got this place, she said, June, see, I told you. <laughs> so what, what's next for your career? Where are you, where would you say you are in your career? And what's next? Uh, where I'm at. And now you're feature, being featured at colleges. You've had several colleges do a feature on you. So and again, you we're talking about, about sort of these good things that happen so that, that none of that would have happened without my one person show at the gallery at Luis de Jesus Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, so I've done so many, you know, artist talks at colleges and, and, and so one of the colleges was Loyola Marymount University. That was like one of the first ones. And so that was organized by a curator there, uh, Karen Rapp. And, and she's a curator at Laban Gallery there. So two months later, I get a call from her and I get invited to do a survey show. What's yeah, that? What's the survey? A survey show is like all of your work. So um, she's gonna be showing Early, you know, my like San Diego State stuff. We'd be showing that painting. I know. You know. Dude did a painting for me that I commissioned her to do a long time ago. And someone stole it. I, I lived in a condo and someone stole it. And I'm just like, it's if, I ever, if I ever see that photo, <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Right. I have you a know, slide. So she took I, a slide. I have a I, slide. Of, right. it, was a, oh, it was like a two panel oil painting of me I and my that sister. Painting. Watching Ben Hur. I don't know if you remember that part, but you guys are watching. I remember ben what we were watching. We you were guys watching are watching Ben Hur. Yeah, you know, but so from um, that period. To, yeah, so there's to, you know over the years. Like a retrospective kind of. Yeah, so it's called a survey. Right. Okay. Yeah. What is it? It's in the fall. Okay. You know, seeing you know things open up like we hope they do. It'll yeah. be the fall of you know this year. So uh -huh. super excited about that. Uh -huh. 
So um, I have another show with Luis, you know, in the fall at the same time. So you'll be creating new work for yeah, that show. Yeah, so that's, so I'm just like focused kind of like this. I can't wait for the summer so I can like really focus. You know, uh, I've changed sort of my teaching. You know, I've been able to transition from elementary, which I love, you know, I love doing it for the 20 years that I did. Teaching at elementary school. At elementary, school you, know, I was, you know, I was doing that. I was the artist kind of in residence, you know, uh, but you know, I told you when I graduated from grad school, I wanted to teach at college. You did? You know, so, so now, you know, so a couple of things happened. Black Lives Matter happened as well. You know, and how did so, that impact? So your everybody's art? making their statement. Oh, oh, they want oh, to include. Oh, they oh. want to open up now and have black art teachers and the professor so that, the college professor level. That's just what I'm seeing. Okay, okay. so okay. Well, good. Exactly. Time. So good. <laughs> so good. You know. So I've been able to to do some transitioning. Okay. So now you're teaching on the college level. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Part time. So, so, so how would you, so where would you say your career is and where would you like it to go? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's just really hard to say because as artists, we're always sort of looking forward and, and, you know, having our, our dreams, you know. All I can say is I'm happy to have the opportunities that I have that are that are coming up, mm -hmm. and 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 they're 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 great opportunities, you know. Okay, so where can people find you, or if they want to look at your art, or some of the artist talks online? Okay. I think you had artist talk at a women's college. I can't remember which one it was, but I, I looked on YouTube. For okay, that. yeah. So quite quite a few. Um, uh, Instagram is where I sort of post the most. So you have your own Instagram? I do. Yeah, you know, what's, uh -huh. what's your name on that? It's J-U-N-E-E-E-C-E-E. -E -E -E. Okay. <laughs> You know, yeah, people right. have your name, you gotta add letters. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, good, that's yes. good. So they can like your Instagram page and they'll find out about your show. Yeah, your shows, I, post, I do shows post so everything. And then, of course, they can go to the Luis de Jesus Los Angeles website. He's got all kind of great stuff on okay. there. He's got recordings okay. and, on there and, and The everything. artist talk you did. When you were describing your your exhibit there, is that um, is that posted on his website? Uh, it it I I think so. Okay. I'm you know he's got a watch. he's got a few. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much well, for you. allowing us to spotlight you, and we are just so excited about the, your success and where you're going, and we're just so glad that we could partner with you to help further expose you to you know the people who. Look to see what arts we're talking about. Thank you so much, Patty. You've been such a beautiful, great supporter for years and years and years. And I love you for it. Thank you. One day I'll be able to get one of <laughs> I have a little tiny one like this. <laughs> but thank you so much. Yes. <laughs>